What is up YouTube? Today, I want to share with you my free-to-play journey in Honkai Star Rail and what I consider beating the game. I have completed the hardest content in the game, which is Memory of Chaos, Stage 10, 30 out of 30 stars. How does this happen? I'm here to share with you my journey. So let's start off by talking about my summons and my roster. So this is my roster. Let's start from the beginning chronologically. In the beginner banner, I got Japard at 50 out of 50. The Zelo banner was the first point in time in which I had to make a decision on uh, what I wanted to do for the future of my account. I could either pull a Zelo or I could wait for Jin Yuan. I thought Zelo was pretty cool, so I actually gave it a shot. I lost a 50-50 to Welch. Uh, Welch turned out to be a very important member of my team. So from that point on, I had a guarantee and I could still get Zila if I wanted to. But I chose not to. I chose to go for Jin Yuan because of the rest of his banner, the four stars. He had Ting Yun and Su Sheng. At this point in time, I was thinking, what are my two Memory of Chaos teams? And for each team, who is going to be the carry? And the way I was thinking about it is, if I pulled a Zila, I would have one really strong team, right? Zila would be the hyper carry for one side. But what would the other team be? For my four stars, I didn't have Su Sheng at the time. I only had, had Dan. And I also had a low Eidolon of Hook. I didn't want to invest into them. I just wasn't feeling them when I was playing. I had to find another DPS, right? I had to find two DPS, not just one, but two DPS carries. So that's why I decided to go with the Genuon banner. After the Genuon banner, there was a Silver Wolf banner. I decided to skip Silver Wolf. I waited mm -hmm. until Luotra and I pulled Luotra and got Luotra. I was very happy about getting him. I got him pretty late. Pity as well. And then the game decided to troll me and gave me a Bailu after I pulled Luocha. Uh, my Bailu is probably going to stay at 20 out of 20 until I really need strong heals. Tasha is one of the best four stars. And even though she's not well built, she can heal just fine. So rest in peace, Bailu. As for the normal stellar banner, I unfortunately only got light cones. Given my character roster, what can I do with this roster of characters? Essentially, there's two teams I can work with in Memory of Chaos. One is the Jinyuan Hyper Carry Team. So the core of the Jinyuan Hyper Carry Team is Drapard, Jinyuan, and Tian. Jinyuan requires a lot of investment in terms of making sure he builds up enough Lightning Stacks. Uh, you want to get six plus Lightning Lord Stacks. Tian helps him get there with her energy recharge, and also Tian is able to buff up his damage. So Tian and Jinyuan are buddy buddies they are going to stick together no matter what Japar naturally fits because you want two offensive supports for Jin Yuan and if you're running two offensive supports you need one really good defense support and that is Japar for many many levels in Mineral Chaos this is my team Japar, Jin Yuan, Tin Yun, Asta my second team that I was building around is Su Sheng and you can probably add about to it as well this is my Su Sheng break team the idea of this team is break the enemy's weakness and then let Su Sheng carry. Well, is a natural partner because there's so many imaginary weakness enemies out there. So Su Sheng and Welt were a natural pair, but there were some cases where Welt didn't do much, right? Welt wasn't breaking. It was very common for me to pair Su Sheng with Asta because Asta's great at fire breaking. So if it was a fire weakness, I would pair Su Sheng with Asta. And there will be times when on my Jin Yuan hyper carry team, that I would bring Welt as well. I think there are some robots that are weak to imaginary and lightning. So I just throw Welt into the Genio Hyper Carry team and then put Asta over to Su Sheng. Asta also synergizes very well with Su Sheng. So it was a natural choice. Another really important part of the free to play journey is managing your resources. If you notice from my roster, I don't have that many characters upgraded. I have nine, right? You see this first three rows? That's the only nine characters I have invested. When you're free to play, you are very limited on resources. So if you build up too many characters, the characters you have uh, are just not good. If you spread your resources thin, your characters are not going to be as good. So I was very, very disciplined about sticking to originally eight, right? My original eight were everything except for Luocha. And then when I got Luocha, I built up Luocha and now I have nine built characters. Early on, I had to use Dan in March 7th. Esther Ball, but as soon as I was able to not use them, right, get away with not using them, they were gone. I did not invest in them. If you just want to build characters, build characters, it's fun. 
I get it. But if you want to progress far in a game and beat the hardest content, you have to focus where you're spending your resources. Another part of resource management for free to play is, well, just spending your resources. Uh, if you see, I actually have not that many resources, right? Look at my experience books. Look at my traces. Do I have any relic experience? There we go. I have 19 blue relic experience. The reason they're so low is that I'm using them, right? I'm not letting them sit. I'm actively using them to make my team better. And you can also see that I have no fuel. And the reason I spent fuel is that my mentality was if I spent fuel and leveled up quicker and got to the next threshold of equilibrium, that unlocks much better efficiency in farming. So that results in more real time spent in the next more efficient equilibrium level rather than saving fuel and being stuck in a less efficient equilibrium level. So yeah, so as a free to play, right, you, everyone knows that this game costs a lot of resources to level up your characters. You just got to do what you got to do and spend your resources and spend your fuel. Something else I try to do is I try to be very efficient on my relics. My solution is using a two piece break set just because nobody else wants. To. Same for my welt. My welt is on four piece break, right? It's not the best in slot for welt, but it's what I have, right? So that's why I'm using it. If you can get away with not investing too much in a character, try to you know skimp where you can, right? With Natasha, she's good enough. Like she can do her job with what she has. So I'm not gonna invest into her. So when it comes to resources, think about what you need to invest into and how to spread it out to get the maximum effect. So now let's talk about MOC progression. For me, there were a couple of stages. The first stage of progressing in MOC is actually unlocking MOC, right? So you gotta complete 15 levels of Forgotten Hall. I was able to do this after Trailblazer 40. So that's when you have level 60s. The next big breakpoint for me in Memory of Chaos is Trailblazer 50. Naturally, that makes sense. Trailblazer 50 is when you lock level 70s. I was able to get all the way up to MOC 7. I didn't do it immediately, right? It took some weeks of incrementally upgrading my gear, incrementally upgrading my grid traces. After that, the next big breakpoint for me is level 80s. Uh, which is Trailblazer 60. Trailblazer 60, right, going from 70 to 80 is a pretty big difference. And there's also a hidden modifier in a game where if you are below your enemy's level, you take more damage and you deal less damage, right? So that's why it's really important for your DPS to be level 80 so that that hidden modifier is reduced as low as possible, right? You want the difference between your level and your enemy's level to be as small as possible, which means in MLC 10, the level 90s are only 10 levels higher than your level 80s. However, my pr progress was only one more MOC level. So with level 80s, I got to MOC 8, and then I hit a wall at MOC 9. The reason is that damage starts to get crazy, especially against Kokolia. Like Kokolia and Freeze Guy, they just deal a lot of damage, they just kill your guys. One way to deal with the crazy damage in MLC 9 and MLC 10 is just have ridiculous DPS, right? This is the most common highlight video you see on YouTube is some crazy built Zila or some crazy built Genuine, right? They have 70 crit chance, 150 crit damage, something nuts, and they can blitz through the hard content. I don't have that. My carries at the moment, they used to be worse than this, right? But at the moment, my carries are only 70, 96. And for Sushang, Right, 70, 90. So my carries were not good enough to blitz through and I needed a second healer. And that's basically where Luotra came into play. With Luotra, I was actually go, able to go from MOC 8 to MOC 10 to 30 out of 30, just by having a second healer. If you cannot out damage your enemy, you have to out sustain your enemy. <laughs> when I first got Luotra, I was only able to get 27 out of 30 stars. Even though you can sustain through the stages, right? You still have to complete it within 20 cycles. After I completed stage 10, I went back, upgraded a few traces, right? I got like level nine of Lightning Lord, level nine of Sushain skill, these little small things all around. And then a few days later, I came back and was able to get those last three stars. If you're curious as to what the third star was that was missing, it was actually stage six. Stage six has the Gatekeeper and Deer. My roster is just terrible against these two enemies. So even though I was able to get 10 out of 10, I was stuck at two stars for MLC six. MLC six is actually a difficulty jump. 
as well as MOC9. But like I said earlier, once I started getting those final bits of upgrades, I was able to complete everything and get 30 out of 30. So what's next for my account? I completed MOC, I'm 30 out of 30, I beat the hardest content the game. What can I do now? Well, the fact is, I can kind of do whatever I want. Not that you couldn't before you complete an MOC, right? Like, but I was focused on progression. And once I finished that goal, that gave me the opportunity to just build whatever. I really like the character design of Chintre. The fact that you gamble to do damage is like, it's a really fun mechanic. So I want to explore this. Similarly, Hook. I think Hook is an awesome character design and I, I want to use her. I just never had a chance to until now, right? And then I didn't have the resources to do it either. Uh, the other thing I'm thinking about doing for my account is potentially preparing for Blade. Why Blade over Kafka? Well, I have a Jin Yuan. So Kafka and Jin Yuan, even though they do damage in different ways, their role is to do lightning AOE damage. From a free-to-play perspective, if I'm trying to be optimal and resource efficient, I don't need to build another lightning AOE carry. I understand that Kafka is pretty awesome, right? She is basically your mommy in game. Uh, she has an awesome character design. And it's hard to say anything bad about Kafka, oh, right? Yeah. Kafka is a great character. Result, it's just that she doesn't fit with what I have right now. And lastly, I'm just going to enjoy the new content. The new events have been a lot of fun. I'm absolutely loving this new Stellar Flare event. You get to do crazy combos. The museum event was a lot of fun. I can just, yeah, I can just take my time and enjoy the rest of the content. Even though I completed the hardest content in the game, there's still a lot of game left for me to play. There's new characters to try out. There's new characters to look forward to, to summoning and just awesome new story content coming up. So I am very hopeful for the future of the game and I will be continuing to play this game for the foreseeable future. Thanks for watching.